Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Ashley Joyce. If you are not a subscriber, how many times we've we had this conversation? If you're not a subscriber by now, I am feeling some type of way. So I'm just gonna imagine you went ahead and already pressed that subscribe button below, like. <laughs> I'm just gonna imagine that you already pressed that subscribe. I'm just gonna imagine you subscribe. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Ashley Joyce. If you're not a subscriber, I don't know, that don't even sound right. I'm feeling some type of way, so just go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. I'm just imagining you already did it. So, you know, we're just gonna say you did it, and if you didn't, just go ahead and do it real quick, real quick. So I just want y'all know, seriously, oh, I cannot stand how this lash is. Just ignore it, please, because I don't feel like trying to fix it. But um, yeah, in today's video, I'm actually going to be doing um, a video about Arizona. And these are just like some common questions that I get asked a lot. So I'm kind of like just going to do a whole video on some of these at a time. Really? This truck look. Okay. All right. So yeah, I have different videos for Arizona topics. Um, and one of the things that people ask me a lot of questions about is Arizona bug life. And so that's why I'm going to dedicate this video to the Arizona bug life. So if you want to know all about the bugs in Arizona, the different bugs that are found out in Arizona, stay watching this video and let's get straight into it. I don't want to remember you guys ear off too long because you know I can talk. I can really, really talk. So let's get into it. So the first bug that I wanted to mention in this video is going to be the scorpions that are out here. There are different types um, of scorpions, different species, like you have the bark scorpion, you have um, the Arizona scorpion, I think that's the name of it, don't quote me. There's different kinds, the black scorpions, the small tiny scorpions, and those are the ones that, act, that are actually more dangerous. Um, so here's the thing about the scorpions, because a lot of people will be asking me this question, y'all, I understand, because you know, when you think about Arizona, obviously it's a desert, so automatically a lot of people are gonna think of scorpions. Um, and yes, there are lots of scorpions in Arizona, but they have what they call hot zones. And these are gonna be areas that the scorpions are found in more concentration. And unfortunately, <laughs> the city that I live in is one of those um, hot zone areas. So we do get scorpions in our home. We've killed about Mm, eight scorpions since we've been in this apartment and we only been here for eight months no we've only been here for yeah we've only been here for eight months and every month we're finding at least one scorpion now the thing is we haven't found one at least a live one in a good couple of months or so and i think it's maybe because it's cold outside i'm not sure but i did find a dead one about a few weeks ago and I was sweeping the floor. I seen it on a dustpan. It was like old and like dried out. So I don't know how long that's been there for. Um, but we usually go through our house and sweep. So I'm pretty sure that that might've been a newer one. Maybe it got killed by mistake. Somebody stepped on it or something and it just dried out. But um, you're more likely to find scorpions closer to the mountains um, in areas, like I say, near where I live, which some of the hot zone areas are Gilbert mesa parts of scottsdale parts of paradise valley anywhere where the mountains are and another tip is anywhere where they're doing a lot of construction keep in mind scorpions were probably probably here way longer than we were before we started to come here and create homes and so when people move out here and they like lifting up all this dirt and stuff that's where their home is so we're disturbing their home so they're going into homes apartments condos whatever um to try to you know she seek shelter or whatever the case may be but scorpions are definitely out in arizona and definitely in certain areas so if you're very scared of scorpions definitely look at the hot zone map and see if the area you're moving to if they have a lot of scorpions they're really good out here about like spraying for scorpions and there are like things you can do so let's get into that so because we oh, sorry this lash is really irritating my eye and i know i have it on wrong but i just really don't feel like we're doing it uh, because we have scorpions in our apartment, we had to do some research and talk to some um, people about them and figure out how to make sure that our house is as safe as possible, especially because my niece live here half of the time. This is our second home. So um, yeah, we want to make sure it's safe for her. So the thing about scorpions, especially, um, you know, the scorpions in, in, in America, most of them are not deadly. So that's the first thing a lot of people automatically assume is if you get stung by a scorpion, you're going to die. Like 
that's not necessarily true. Um, scorpion venom is just as bad as bee venom. I'm talking about the ones in Arizona in particular. I'm pretty sure, I don't know every species, so I don't know about some of the other ones, but the ones I know about that's in Arizona or in America, usually if you get stung by them, they say this thing is very painful for a lot of people for a couple of days, and then it starts to, you know, go away but the problem that people may have with scorpions is if they're allergic to the venom that they have just like a bee so they can become deadly if you have allergic reaction to your to the sting so a lot of times when you get stung by a scorpion what they'll do what they'll have you do is clean the area first with soap and water they'll have you put ice on it and just kind of watch it and see what happens if you are having symptoms or if your pain tolerance is like, or your pain level is super high, then obviously you're gonna go to the hospital. Um, or if you're feeling weird or out of breath, or feeling like you have an anaphylactic shock, like you can't breathe, or you feeling like you know your chest is tightening or anything like that, lip swelling, you wanna you wanna go to the emergency room right away. But if you're unsure or if you're allergic to a lot of different things, and if you have like an EpiPen, definitely use that. But at the discretion of your doctor. I'm not a doctor, that, that is a disclaimer. I don't follow exactly what I'm saying. Go out, talk to your doctor um, or call poison control. That's the thing, I almost, I kinda got stung by a scorpion. I stepped on it, it stung me. It was like a quick little prick, so I didn't, I don't think it really got much venom in me because I kicked it so fast and my feet was um, sore and kinda painful for like a day, not even a day. It wasn't bad at all. It was like on a scale of one to 10, the pain was like a two. It was just annoying, um, but, yeah, so like if you ever get stung by a scorpion, you definitely want to call poison control. That's the first thing you ever want to do, um, unless you're having an allergic reaction type symptoms and you call 911. Poison control will also tell you if you should go to the hospital as well. Uh, they see these here, this, this all the time. Um, so you want to call them. I'll leave that number in the description box below. Um, but yeah, most people, it's only been like one death um, from a scorpion bite in like 22 years. And before that, it was like 50 years. Um, a lot of times people you want to be more concerned about is people who have obviously an allergy to scorpions, babies, or the elderly or anybody who are immune compromised. That's when you want to be nervous about the scorpion. But I just want to ease some of you guys' fears because I know a lot of people are really, really scared of scorpions. And that's not really an animal, I mean, an insect that you want to be so fearful of. But number two that's where you might want to be a little bit more afraid and we're going to get into that so the second bug that is found in arizona quite often are roaches roaches i mean i know roaches are like oh some people we grew up with roaches like for me we lived in a home where they had we had roaches here and there because in michigan um it's just certain areas it's like roaches were super popular but out here oh my gosh you guys there's so many roaches everywhere and it's so common like they have big roaches small roaches drain roaches these beetle like roaches flying roaches roaches that be outside just crawling around on the ground i'm like ugh. the reason why i'm saying you will be more afraid of roaches than you are scorpions is because roaches actually some of them can spread disease or illness um allergies um all types of stuff you know they can flare up people asthma because of the feces that they leave behind you want to make sure that if you have those especially in arizona they even have that like if you live in an apartment you just call your leasing office and they put you on a list to have your place sprayed but you definitely make sure that that is eradicated you don't want roaches in your home like i say so many health um effects that they can have whereas with the scorpion sting they might sting you and yes yeah, painful for a little bit of time unless you're allergic um they also do have anti-venom for scorpion stings as well because i have a friend who was allergic and they end up having to give them the venom um anti-venom because they were having really bad symptoms it was really bad for them but most people get stung and they're fine they just be in pain for a couple of days but with the roaches you know you you if you have them for a prolonged long period of time you can end up having health issues like asthma flare-ups you can't breathe like all this other stuff across the board or for a longer period of time so that's why i say definitely be aware of the roaches in arizona the drain roaches come through the drain so a lot of times people put the little drain catchers in there to keep them from coming through the drain um so yeah definitely another insect found in arizona the third thing is ants so there's so many type of ants in arizona it's not even funny like, there are flying ants ground ants fire ants most of these ants do sting some of them um, do have, you know, like for instance, fire ants, if you get stung by those, they're very painful. They have the velvet ant. All these are different types of ants. And the like velvet ant, for instance, is one that is very painful. I don't know if you guys ever watched on YouTube. It's this guy, his name is, um, well, I'm sitting on my leg for too long because my feet is falling asleep. But his name is Coyote and um, he's Brave Wilderness. I've been watching him since before I moved out to Arizona. He's actually one of the first channels I found 
to kind of get information about the bugs in Arizona. But he used to get stung by these different ants um, that were found in Arizona and these different insects, but more so ants, and they were very powerful. But most of these, these type of ants you won't find just like around the homes. But what you will find are like fire ants, regular little ants. Like a lot of these ants do sting. Quick story time. Quick story time. So when I first moved out to Arizona, I was in my condo. I was sleep laying down, sleep okay. I woke up, felt something crawling on my arm, and I did like this. Went back to sleep, felt felt something again. I was like, what is that? I look up, and there was a little ant. And right when I was looking at it, it was about to sting me, and I was about to hit it, but it stung me. It was too late. It stung me, and I was like, ah! And I like hit it and it died and I took a piece of tape, I put it on there. And because I was new out here, I didn't know what type of ants, what type of incest they have, it was poisonous or whatever, it freaked me out. So I called poison control, they sent somebody over to look at my sting because my arm started to burn and it started to feel like my arm was on, like my whole forearm was on fire. So initially I'm like, is this a fire ant? But it's not red, it's black, so what is this? And I. I don't know, it really was like freaking me out. Like, what kind of end is this? Like, am I gonna have to go to the hospital? You know, I really didn't know. So the people came, they looked at my arm, they see the area where it was red, and it was like, okay, they drew a circle around it to make sure it wasn't spreading. And um, they also told me if I had baking soda to put the baking soda on there with water, like a paste. Um, and they basically checked my heart rate, they checked my, my throat to make sure I wasn't having any type of reaction. He was telling me, because I showed them the ant, I forgot the name of the ant that stung me, but it is an ant. He said that does it is like venomous, poisonous, one or the other. I think venomous. And he said that one can cause a lot of pain, but there's like no fear around it. It's just painful. Like there's like most people like they're fine. Like you just go unless you're allergic to the venom, and that's why they were checking me for that. They had EpiPen ready just in case and everything. And they checked the you know the mark. He told me that the pain would last for a couple of days. I'm like, what? A couple of days? Um, he was like, yeah, it might get worse before it gets better, but I should be fine. So they told me to keep putting the baking soda uh, paste on there, um, like, you know, a couple times a day. And then through time, it should lessen. So when they left, maybe like a few hours later, my arm just was like, felt so weird. Like, it felt like it was, like, if I touched it, you know, if somebody punch you real hard, if you, like, have a sore muscle, it felt like that on my arm. It was weird. I was like, from this tiny little ant. Um, so that was kind of like, Ugh. so after that, and I already don't like ants. So I was already like, ugh, like why is this ant sting me? Um, and I had that ant for a long time. I kept it on the tape on this little cup and I put ant that stung me on there. <laughs> I, sh I wish I had a video on there um, or I had it still so I could show you guys the little ant. But anyway, so from there, um, you know, it just made me more aware of the different bugs out here. But yeah, so that was, that's, there's different types of ants. Some are harmless and some do sting and they do cause a little pain. The next thing is bees and wasps. There are bees and wasps out here like any other state, anywhere there's flowers, most of the time there's gonna be bees. The most dangerous thing about bees is bees, um, you know, there are people who are allergic to bee venom and wasp venom. I'm just gonna be very careful with that, but. Every video, huh? Anyway, there are, um, you want to be careful about the venom when it comes to bees because you just never know if you're allergic to that. So that's why some people like, if you know you're allergic to bees, and just be careful because you obviously don't want to get stung by one. Um, another thing about bees is they do have these bees out here called African um, bees. And those bees are like aggressive, very aggressive bees. So if you ever like get into their environment they will swarm you and kill you like i know that sounds crazy but they're actually deadly because if you get stung i think the average human can take up to like 20 to 100 stings um and be okay and yeah they're gonna obviously have some effects unless they're allergic to the bee but if you get stung like hundreds of times by those bees then most people like they end up going into shock or end up you know whatever so there are cases of people who accidentally step into their swarm and they will chase you up to 20 miles you guys, I'm just quoting stuff out and saying stuff. And I'm like, where did I get this information from? I must have heard this because I'm saying specific numbers and stuff. Like, is it 20 miles? I don't even know. I just know they can, They will chase you for a long time. Even if you go underwater, they will wait. So those African bees are something you want to be careful with. So if you're hiking somewhere in Arizona and you notice a couple of bees that don't seem quite right or they look like they're these big fluffy, like African, like you have to look up the picture just back away slowly and leave that area because if you accidentally disturb their um homies <laughs> their nests or whatever they can literally kill you so be careful with those but other than that i mean most people don't stumble across that like you have to be up in the mountains or in their area to really have that happen 
Um, the next thing, um, probably the most dangerous thing on this list are um, the next two that I'm about to name is the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes obviously carry viruses. They carry, you know, um, and they have, you know, um, mosquitoes carry different like parasites, all types of viruses. I mean, just all types. So you want to be very mindful. The Zika virus It's just so much stuff that mosquitoes can transmit to people so if you have a lot of mosquitoes in your area make sure you have like control of them rather it be through you know um, having somebody come out to spray or if you have like some of those candles or some of those things you put into your light thing because mosquitoes are not something that you want to have um, around you and definitely protect yourself because like I said mosquitoes can become very dangerous very fast like they seem all small and harmless but if you keep getting bit by them you just don't know what they're carrying they are known to transmit different diseases different parasites different viruses so be aware of that i'm not trying to scare you i'm just trying to make you guys aware i wouldn't be scared just be aware so if you notice a lot of mosquitoes just do something about it um and that, or, or you know like if you see a lot of mosquitoes and you also see a lot of spiders let the spiders live up and like on your patio or whatever because that's what's going to eat them and catch them in the net the next thing um are kissing bugs so like i said another dangerous bug out here kissing bugs are known to carry chogs disease which is a very um serious disease or can become very serious um so you obviously you know and i'm going to leave pictures of all these bugs like in the corner but chalk disease is something that is a parasite and it literally can kill you it's another deadly thing um they're accounted for not a whole bunch of deaths but um arizona kissing bugs are known to at least half of those to carry um, that particular unfortunately that particular disease so you want to be very careful sometimes people can have it and never know or get bit by it and never know so if you suspect that you have a kissing bug in your home or in your area there's lots of them definitely go talk like definitely <clears throat> have a exterminator come out to check and if you see it in your home put they say put it in a little container do not squish it do not touch it Put it in a little container, like get some plastic gloves, put them in a container and freeze it or put it in alcohol and then show whoever, like whether it be an exterminator or whoever you go tell, like, hey, I think I have kissing bugs in my home because you want to get rid of those. That's not something you want to play with. Um, and then you want to um, have them check for it to make sure that it, and if you suspect you got bit by one, definitely go to the doctor and have them check it out and also talk to health officials or something like that. Because like I said, they can carry this disease. You can have it, not even know, and it can show up later and it can cause a lot of problems. So definitely something to look out for. And on, on long side of kissing bugs, this is like the same sentence, but let's put a slash there. Bed bugs are another thing Arizona have. That's pretty much in, anywhere, everywhere, because travel, they basically introduce them to all over. So just be aware of bed bugs. They look like this. Those Some people can think they get bit by the kissing bug that they are getting bit by the bed bug. Know the difference. Um, the bed bug um, usually don't carry disease, but they can make you um, sick as far as like, tired because they do put this um enzyme in you that make you tired i just beat the one out stuff i must be watching way too many videos on this stuff because i don't know why i'm just spitting out these informational facts or whatever or uh, anyway but yeah so that's that um the next bug we're going to talk about are the desert centipedes um desert centipedes look like this and um those things i heard are the most painful thing you can get in arizona you do not want to get stung by those they're found up in the mountains sometimes like in the desert you know throughout the the sand but most people i've known seen them in the mountains um they can't be obviously on land not on the mountains obviously be anywhere in the desert but that's where they're found is in isolated areas like up in the mountains or up in the sand somewhere out in the sand um the next thing is going to be spiders so there's different type of spiders out here you have the black widow you have tarantulas you also have like the brown recruits which is also known as a um arizona brown spider um those particular spiders um out of all of them the most dangerous one is going to be the black widow and the brown recruits or the brown spider so the black widow obviously that's one if you get bit by if you see do not touch um if you get bit by that you definitely want to go to the hospital so that they can um you know check you and administer anti-venom if they have to because that is probably one of the more dangerous bugs i heard to get bit by um honestly all the things i named like the mosquitoes are dangerous the kissing bugs are dangerous the spiders are you know obviously dangerous um the roaches are something you don't want to have because of a lot of other issues so um yeah but far as the spiders the black widow and then 
that particular one is, is a systemic thing so like if you get bit by a black widow it's systemic so it, it travels at your whole body uh, but the difference is um with the black widow and the brown recruits is if you get bit by the brown recruits they typically are um localized so if you get bit by you'll notice like a bite mark and then you'll also notice it turning red and then you can see corrosion or um, degrading of your cells or skin in that area so you can end up with a hole literally a hole wherever it bit you so that's how you can know the difference um and obviously you want to be careful with that because that can turn into an infection and you don't want to end up being um like septic or anything like that so if you notice any type of bites from any bug that does not look right get it checked out by your doctor um and then the next thing is going to be termites so they have termites carpenter ants things like that back on the ants but termites are common here um we first moved out here we we know we had carpenter ants or termites because one day it would be these it would be these little tiny dust piles on our floor on our wood like they would be like just sitting there one day I, I don't know i was walking across the floor and i just felt this gritty stuff i'm like what is that i just swept so i'm like what is that so i swept it up and i'm like how did this sand get like it looked like sand i'm like how did this sand get on the floor so i swept it up i threw it away and i thought it came from you know one of our shoes so I'm like, okay, threw it away. The next day, the same thing happened again. I'm like, what the heck? So um, then I noticed these little piles of sand, like ant, like you know how if you have ants outside your home and they have like the sand, I noticed that on the floor. And then we see this little hole and then my friend's like, something just stuck his head out of there. And I'm like, what? And apparently it was either termite or carpenter ants. So they actually will barrel themselves in your home and obviously that's not good for the structure so if you suspect that you have that talk to a professional and the next thing is the last thing that i'm going to talk about the arizona have is ticks and that's everywhere ticks um you know once again are another bug you even be careful with because they can carry lyme disease um and if you suspect that you have ticks definitely get that taken care of but if you ever get bit by a tick they say the tip is to make sure you get that tick head out of your skin or your dog skin um because you don't want that tick to sit there because if the tick head is in your body for more than like so many hours i think it's like 24 hours or something like that it's so many hours then it can transmit that lyme disease so you it can happen just from the bite itself but most of the time it's when the tick head been sitting in people's skin they didn't even know so if you notice it you want to get that out in one good pool you want to get every make sure everything is out of there it's cleaned um and then you also talk to your doctor um so ticks are something that is definitely found in arizona so i know this video is long but you guys want to know about the different type of bugs found in arizona my thoughts on this is no matter where you go there's going to be bugs they're going to be animals they're going to be humans they're going to be insects like that's life that's the ecosystem it's the circle of life there's no way to avoid it but if you are scared of these type of bugs just be aware of them there's so many other types of bugs out in arizona i mean you got different type of centipedes and i've talked about this before in the past like they have these centipedes where if you touch it it makes it burns your skin um it is weird because it looks like a like a comb over wig like that's what the centipede look like but um you know you just want to be aware of the things that's in your area and just keep note like if you see it just do something about it don't be so i don't i don't want you guys to be afraid to you're like i'm not moving to arizona they got scorpions they got black widows they got these ants that'll sting you and, and bees that'll swarm you and ah, like you know don't i know it sounds so scary but i would say to you like live your life like these bugs are here we're here if anything we're killing their system we're knocking down their trees we're stepping on them um, most of the time these bugs are not something that cause issues is more so people causing issues with people um, more than the bugs causing issues with people so just be aware um, and if you do run into any of these things you know just try to do what you got to do you know to make sure that they're they're out of your home keep your home safe but out in public or out in the wild just let them be so we can all live in harmony and be okay y'all this is coming from me somebody who do not like bugs who's very freaked out by certain bugs like i'm not scared of scorpions but i'm terrified of ants like that doesn't make sense but whatever so <laughs> um anyway that is this video if you guys want to know other animals that live in arizona not necessarily bugs but just like animals like maybe even i can do a reptile um version of this same video or i can do like animal version like you know or whatever i, I really enjoy this type of video and these type of research 
topics because I love animals. I was just watching about the box jellyfish yesterday for literally three hours. Like I get fixated on these type of things. I'm a nerd. I'm just telling you, I'm a nerd. I like this type of stuff, the science for me. So if you want to know more about uh, animals and bugs out here or whatever, just let me know in the comment section below. If you have any specific questions, go ahead and ask me in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks guys for watching this long video. I appreciate you guys and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.